Hello everyone, Trophy Winehander, welcome back to my wine channel. This is Super Bowl Sunday, so I thought it would be appropriate for me to drink a California wine. Um, so I'm not a big football fan, but I watch the Super Bowl like everyone else, love the uh, novelty bets, love the halftime show. So anyways, as I said before, basically anytime there's an excuse to drink and open up a nice bottle, that's what I do. So today we're going to be reviewing this Double Diamond 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon. And so the last part of this will be about the wine, but um, there's so much history about this wine. So I kind of want to have to do a lot of background. I'm going to do a lot of name dropping. We're going to talk about uh, Andy Beckstoffer. We're going to talk about um, Fred Schrader um, So and the whole thing. So let's uh, start from the beginning here. Double Diamond is produced by Schrader Cellars and Schrader Cellars is owned by um, the Schrader family and in particular the kind of iconic guy is Fred Schrader. And so Fred Schrader started out as an auction um, art dealer and in the 19, I guess 90s, somewhere around there, he was a big wine collector and his wife was Ann Colgan of Colgan Cellars. They um, kind of split ways, part, parted ways, and in 1992 or around there, he started to have his own um, brand called Schrader uh, Cellars. And in 1999, he made a very, very good decision, which he started to buy grapes from Andy Beckstoffer. Who is Andy Beckstoffer? If you go back to my other video, which will, I will have at the end of this uh, video, he is one of the owners of um, some of the vineyards in Tokalon. So Tokalon is a very famous uh, vineyard in the Napa Valley. It's kind of like the Garden of Eden or um, the, you know, the Holy Grail of vineyards. And you'll see in my video of Opus One, that's where Opus One is produced and that most of it is owned by the Mondavi family. So go to that video for that part of it. But there is 80, about 80 some odd acres that's owned by Andy Beckstoffer. And so Andy Beckstoffer is a, a business person for Virginia. He also, like Fred Schrader, is a wine, likes wine, but it's not a winemaker, he's just a landowner. And he had the very good um, foresight to buy land in Napa Valley when it was cheap. At, at one time, you know, land was going very cheaply because the grapes weren't doing well. And that was like in the mid eighties around there. And he had the foresight of buying about 80 acres of land in uh, Tokalon. And I think today people would say, wow, you know, if that came up, I'd buy it for sure. Well, it was for sale and he was the guy that did it. He went through a lot of turmoil. I think he went bankrupt at one point, scrounged some money around. But anyways, he had the foresight. He's got 80 acres of Tokalon. Andy Beckstoffer does not sell wine at all. He doesn't make wine. He just sells his um, land or leases his land to different owners. And I love him because he's like a business person. So he th thinks like a business person. So he started to sell grapes. And one of the people that he sold it to was Fred Schrader. And Fred Schrader has done very, very well buying those grapes from uh, Andy Beckstoffer. But uh, let's go back to Andy Beckstoffer and, and his business sense. So he has kind of established um, kind of some rules around this. And so one of the things that he did, he's a big, big business person. He doesn't get pushed around. So he decided to sell wines under the Tokalon name. Uh, so he allowed, so one of the things he did is like, he said, I, ha I, will, I think it was a early rule, but I, I know around 2015, he did this. He started to sell wine, uh, his, his great or his acreage or his grapes to growers, but he had a rule. He said, whatever you sell your wine at, then you have to pay me a hundred times that um, for a ton of grapes. So let's say the bottle, you sell a wine for $200 a bottle, then you would have to pay Andy Beckstoffer $20,000 per ton of grapes. And fair deal, right? It worked out to about 25% of the cost of the grape. And his 
kind of thinking as well, if you sell the wine and you're making profit, I should make something too. And so people, he's a very um, controversial person in Napa Valley. Some people say he's kind of a warlord and he just runs things. Um, and he, his point of view is, hey, I'm protecting the farmers. You guys, as all these winemakers, you guys are making all this money. How come the farmers don't get to make money? So I'm protecting the farmers by, you know, keeping the prices up. He also is a big, uh, he's against um, development in Napa Valley. So even though he's a very small landowner, he's a very powerful landowner. And he basically says, hey, listen, we should keep this all rural. Now, some people on the flip side have an argument saying, well, he's just trying to keep his monopoly of things, right? He doesn't want, so that's why you see in Napa Valley when you go there, you don't see a lot of big hotels and resorts. You see some very small, but fairly quaint and very, fairly small. That's because most of it is being used for acreage and for vineyards. And Andy Beckstuffer is one of these leading people that have said, listen, we, we shouldn't do anything. Um, to you know, overdevelop the area or, or urbanize this area. It should be continued to be rural. So he's got his um, followers and he's got his um, uh, critics. In 2015, he decided to call all his uh, owners together. And by the way, he does year to year contract. It's not a long term thing. So it's negotiated yearly. And so he went to them and said, listen, guys, we got to renegotiate all this. So then now he says, I need 175 times the bottle price for a ton of grapes. And then also there has to be a minimum price. And at that time in 2015, it's $125 per bottle. And every time you use my grapes, you have to actually put uh, Andy, uh, Be uh, Beckstoffer Tokolon Vineyard. So this is his way of protecting his name, right? So again, when he did that, and um, Fred Schrader did this, started to do this in 1999, you know, had Schrader, Schrader wines and he had Tokolon Vineyards. Well, Robert Mondavi decided to sue him because he's like, well, Tokolon, Robert Mondavi, if you look at my Opus One video, they trademarked the name Tokolon, very savvy, business savvy person too. So these big, these guys are all really good business people. So the, and that's, this is kind of uh, explained to me what I didn't know before. So if you look at right now on all the bottles of Tokolon, it's T-O and second word is K-O-L-O-N. So I always thought it was two Kalon, like two somewhere, but it's actually Tokolon. The original name of this vineyard is Tokolon, one word. But Robert Mandavi decided to actually split it into two words, to, to, to and Kalon because I think that made it easier for them to trademark. So they kind of slipped it in and they said, well, we've tra trademarked the name Tokolon. And then went to everyone else and said, listen, you can't use Tokolon because we've trademarked it. You can, even if you have, and there are some smaller uh, wineries there that um, in the Tokolon um, uh, vineyard, which is quite massive, that um, can't use Tokolon on their label. They can't say it's Tokolon, it has to be Oakville. Well, Andy Beckstoffer is not that type of person. He says, forget that. I'm going to use uh, Beckstoffer Tokolon. So I think, and, I, and maybe at the original ones, he just said Tokolon. So he got sued by Opus and he countersued them because Opus is saying, well, listen, I've got a trademark and you can't use the name Tokolon. And Andy Beckstoffer came back and said, well, wait a minute. I have land, I, my land, my 80 acres is in the original Tokolon. You guys, Robert Mondavi, actually bought some adjacent land that wasn't really Tokolon and now have kind of, uh, by the osmosis, have decided that's Tokolon too. So you guys, in fact, shouldn't, I know I'm the guy that should really have the rightful name Tokolon. You guys are kind of fake Tokolon. So anyways, this legal battle went on and on and they decided to kind of settle. So. Now he can label his wines uh, Beckstoffer Tokolon Vineyard. And that's the distinguishing part. So he's got about 80 acres. And of that, I think he sells about 18 um, to um, Fred Schrader. And Fred Schrader and Paul Hobbs have been two long time buyers of um, his uh, grapes. Now Schrader was a very astute person. 
He, um, again, was not a winemaker. His first vintages weren't that great, but then in 1999, he hired a guy called Thomas Rivers Brown, and he was formerly the winemaker at Turley, and that really turned around everything. And then him and um, Thomas Brown picked, and because they got in, they got in early with um, Andy Beckstoffer, they got to be able to pick the best plots, and they've kind of um, monopolize those best plots because all they do is they buy the same plots every year. So Beck Stoffer doesn't really care. If you don't want the wine, I'm sure there's other people that want it, right? Um, and so uh, the Schrader people have bought the best things. And if you look at the Beck Stoffer, uh, sorry, if you look at the Schrader wines, they have what seven of them and they have different kind of vineyards on them. Uh, I don't know have them all. I, I can list some of them in the comment section, but go to their website. You'll see they're different vineyards and that's because they believe even though all of them from come from Tokalon they each have th these distinctive plots have distinct characteristics and that's why they've done that so you can think about that it's it's kind of like Schrader wines have sing are like, almost like single vineyard wines from Tokalon and Opus 1 is more like a generalized blend of different vineyards from um, from their portion of Tokalon. And so that's why Opus One has more, um, mark, uh, more produces more bottles than Schrader. The other thing is because um, Beckstoffer has kind of set all these rules, you have to admit $125, you have to pay me essentially 25% of the cost of your wine, that really makes the profit margin for these producers very limited, right? So that's why you'll see that most of these wines are sold um, by allocation because they don't, ha they can't afford to make this wine and have this huge marketing budget um, because they lose money. And so that's what you'll see. Most of these wines are fairly tightly controlled. They don't have huge PR marketing. Um, they're allocated and they're sold very, um, they're, they have to be tight business people, which is a good thing. Beck Stoffer has done a good job in terms of making sure, hey, if you're gonna use my grapes, make sure you kind of have your uh, financial uh, house in order and make sure that it's a good wine. And if you don't, then you'll go out of business and then the next guy will try and take in my grapes. That Whereas Opus One, because they don't have any limits on how they use their grapes, uh, Mondavi family doesn't have any limits. They obviously have a huger um, budget, marketing budget. So you'll see them produce more bottles and you'll produce, and you'll also see them market more uh, than some of the wines from uh, Beckstoffer's Tokalon. I'll also mention that Schrader Vineyards sold um, their interest in 2017 to Constellation Brands. So you might be asking yourself, What's so special about Tokalon? Why would anyone buy from Tokalon? Okay, so you can go back to my Opus One video and you can also go to this video because as I'm drinking more of these wines, I'm kind of learning. And in my opinion, as I will go through the tasting, Tokalon has, um, the, the grapes that are produced have two distinct things that I find. One is that their mid palate is very rich and opulent. And two is the quality of tannin is exceptional. And I don't know how to explain that to you except when I taste with someone. Um, like for instance, we opened it tomorrow, uh, last night and you'll see my tasting. The tannins are, it's a 14.5% alcohol wine. It's a tannic wine, but it feels soft. So that's what I mean by the quality of tannins. Uh, wine can be tannic but because of the quality of the grape, the quality of the tannin is not harsh, it's soft. So you can actually have a very tannic wine that's still very subtle and soft in terms of tannin. It's very hard to describe, but you can taste it. Um, you, the other thing with what my experience so far with Tokalon produced wines is they have a very rich, encompassing um, taste to them and very, um, very good mid palate. This is very important. So a lot of wines will have a push and then have a kind of a emptiness and then have a long aftertaste. That doesn't have this, it kind of has flows very nicely along, which adds to its smoothness. So that's why 
everyone buys Tokolan grapes. And I think proof is in the pudding. If it was all fake, if it all didn't matter, then no one would pay him this price. But it is my opinion, obviously all these winemakers and all these um, owners can taste the difference. If not, then they wouldn't pay this price. And essentially, um, Andy Beckstoffer can command that price because everyone knows the quality of the vineyard and the grapes are at a certain level. Okay, you're saying to yourself, you've said all this trophy, you've talked nothing about the wine. Okay, that was all background and it all makes sense now. So again, Double Diamond is produced by Schrader Vineyards and uh, it's only been produced a couple of times. I think um, in 12, they had a hiatus till 16 and 17, 18, it's been produced. Um, so you'll notice on here, and actually most of the grapes come from the Tokolon uh, vineyards, okay, or at Be Beckstoffer to Tokolon vineyards. Of course, the other part is owned by Opus One and Mondavi. So you're saying to yourself, well, if it's Tokolon vineyard, why would they put it on their label? Well, if you recall, Andy Be Beckstoffer says the minimum price of a bottle has to be $125. And this is not $125, at least in the US. I think here, I'll put it in the comment section, I bought it for about $120. So you can't put it on there. So you're saying to yourself, well, why would they put this wine in here? Why would they put Beckstoff, uh, Andy Beckstoffer Tokolan Vineyard grapes in this wine? The reason being is they buy a lot. They love, this winemaker, Thomas Rivers Brown, is in love with Tokolon uh, Beckstoffer uh, grapes. He buys a ton of this stuff. And so some, so they produce different wines. So there might be some that are a little bit inferior in quality, or there might be a little bit extra. So what they do is, what do they do? They, they'll blend it and they'll put it in this wine. This is an exceptional year for a couple of reasons. One. The 18 vintage is a great vintage. Two, in normal years, I don't think the percentage is as high. And I've, I've kind of checked with different sites and even the, pe the people I bought it from. This particular vintage, about 80 to 85% of the grapes were taken from Tokolon uh, Vineyard. Now, it doesn't say that anywhere. And they don't have any promise of that. So this is why this is such an exceptional bottle because in previous years, I don't think it was as high. They took it from other very good vineyards, but not as much from Tokolon. And I think going forward, once this wine gets popular, they'll kind of decrease it because they've never promised you anything, right? All it says is it's from Oakville. It's produced by Schrader and nothing else. So it's um, kind of uh, a, a little bit of time period where you, I think you get a huge value for this wine. And the 2018 is one of these anomalies where they're kind of trying to recreate the brand and they're trying to um, kind of, uh, you know, re yeah, recreate it, get it popular. Um, and so you're just getting a really de good deal because you're getting a huge amount of Tokolon um, grapes to produce this wine. And this is the great thing. This, this is kind of, I don't think you would call it a second wine of Schrader, but you, this is kind of their experimental wine. So with their existing, um, kind of uh, Schrader wines, sing, kind of single vin vineyard wines, there's a certain expectation. They get like 9,900 points every year. So they can't really experiment very much with them. This wine, it's kind of a new wine. It's, um, it's a different label, even though it's produced by Schrader. So they can experiment more. They can use some, may, not um, less, a little bit less quality grapes, which are still good in this wine. And so that's the great thing. The other thing that's special about the 18 vintage that was not um, with, with other vintages, this is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, okay? Other vintages always have a blend. This is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. So I think this is a very unique buy if you can find this. I'm not sure what they're gonna do for 2019, but I'm quite certain the quality or the amount of Tokolan grapes that they're gonna use in this wine is probably gonna go down. It's not gonna be this high in the future. It's Asian oak for 16 months, and about 50% of this is new oak. And then I'm gonna um, kind of close up on the label. You'll you'll see it. It's a quite a beautiful label, which was created by Fred Schrader's wife. Let's take a look at this label of this wine. 
So the design, Double Diamond, was um, designed, it's redesigned, I think the 17 was a different label, designed by a French trainer's wife, Double Diamond. You'll see it's from Oakville, Napa Valley. It doesn't talk about Tokalon at all. It doesn't talk about where the grapes are from. And I think that gives them a little bit of uh, leeway in the future. Bottled by Schrader Cellars. It is definitely on their website. Thomas Rivers Brown is the winemaker. Again, not much information. The um, cork, uh, pretty standard. It's not that long. So I think that would be for um, medium turn aging, like five years. And this is the color of the wine. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it is very dark color. But at least um, from my perspective, um, it's a beautiful dark. It's very rich colored and very pleasing. Um, one of the best colors. I, I don't know if you had to judge a, a, a wine by color. Um, this is very um, um, viscous and very attractive. You know this is going to be a very um, uh, kind of full-bodied, um, delicious wine. On the smell, you can smell, I can smell like a slight hint of like almost like a greenness, like a eucalyptus, like, but you can smell oak for sure, like new oak like almost toasted cedar. Um, um, yeah, I, I smell that mintiness, almost like a cool climate, a Cabernet, but very light and fresh, almost floral in the aroma. Of course there's underlying fruit, but this is unusually uh, subtle. It's a very um, elegant Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't, I don't know how to put that. That would not, this is not, um, what I would normally associate with like Napa heavy Napa cabs. And this is like 14 and a half percent. So this is not a light, but the smell is very almost floral and um, very elegant, I would say. Okay. Right away on the taste, again, this is what I'm saying. You know this is a young wine, 14.5%. You know it's tannic. But the tannins are very um, subtle. Like, I can feel the grip in my mouth, but it's not a harsh, it's not coarse. It's very subtle. And that's what I mean by the quality of tannins. It's so smooth. Like, you know it's tannic. You can feel the tannins. But... Um, with harsh tannins, it's almost like they dry you up very quickly. This one is kind of like, it's very uh, subtle, kind of sneaks up on you and all of a sudden your, your mouth is all dry. It's, it's very subtle, very pleasing. Um, I was drinking with my wife who, wasn't, who was not a big red wine drinker and she thought this was quite acceptable. And again, this is a very tannic, very full-bodied wine but somehow it comes across as very relaxed and um, very much in balance. Um, very, very pleasing wine. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine a pop and open wine of this quality, but that's what I'm thinking. Like it doesn't take that much aeration. Of course, it will improve with some aeration and from some aging, but it's really good right now. It's very fruity, um, very balanced. That's what I want to say. Yeah, wonderful flavors, lots of dark fruit, cassis, raspberry, um, blueberries, black plums. There's lots of tannin, but it's not grippy tannins. It's very sophisticated tannins. Uh, I don't even think it's like French Bordeaux tannins. It's very peculiar. Um, and this to me is um, gives me a good idea of what the difference is, is with Tokalon grapes, very um, luxurious, very opulent, but the tannins, the quality of the tannins, that's why I go back to the quality of the tannins in this wine is very high end. And that's, I think, part of the reason you pay for Tokalon grapes or Tokalon vineyard. Um, that's the marked characteristic, very blended, um, 
I don't know how to describe it. It's not, it's light. It's not light. You know this wine isn't light, but it's very pleasing and very easy to drink. And um, I'm loving this wine. So my score of this wine is going to be, um, I'm going to say like 94 points. I wanted to say 93, but I'm in, I, I'm really enjoying it. There was a bit of a bite last night at the end when I was tasting it. But now today I'm having it. It's really delicious. Um, honestly, if I compared this to a 2018 Opus One, I think this wine would win hands down at this point. It's really, really nicely integrated. Um, it's a beautiful wine. Um, now, can it last 20 years like Opus? I'm not sure. It's not really built for that. Um, it's not built like a Schrader wine. It's probably a little bit inferior in terms of the grape varietal um, than Schrader. So again, it's probably a, mostly a blend of different vineyards from Tokolon uh, at Bextoffer Tokolon in this. Uh, it won't be as, as um, focused as Schrader wines, which are kind of almost single vineyard Tokolon uh, and Bextoffer Tokolon grapes, but it's a really pleasing wine. Um, I, I'm yeah. I, the, not much else I can say about this wine. It's to me ninety four points. Love it. Um, I would drink it right away with a couple of hours of aeration, and then I would probably drink within the next five years. It's delicious right now. There's no need to wait. Until next time, happy drinking.